Hey everybody, welcome back to The Wolf Pit with another episode of What Are We Eating? In my opinion, meatloaf is the quintessential comfort food. And meatloaf is very accommodating for any kind of ingredients you have on hand. You can make meatloaf with whatever kind of meat you like or with whatever meat you have on hand. Ground beef, ground pork, ground turkey, ground chicken, ground venison, ground moose, ground bear, or ground monkey meat. Just use whatever kind of meat you have on hand. And the same thing goes for the vegetables. Use what you like or what you have on hand. Or you don't have to use vegetables at all. You can finish off your meatloaf with ketchup or barbecue sauce or a gallon of gravy if your mother-in-law is cooking it. I love fresh meatloaf, but leftover meatloaf is also good. Actually, it's fantastic. If you've never had a leftover cold meatloaf sandwich the next day, you don't know what you're missing. The thing about meatloaf is it's easy to make and anyone can make it. But some people don't have the time, wherewithal, or they simply don't want to make a meatloaf. That's when they take a trip to their local grocery store and head to the frozen food aisle and pick up a frozen meatloaf dinner. Some of the dinners you're about to see, I've already done a review on, but I did it by themselves. So today I wanted to try them all together and see who has the best frozen meatloaf dinner. Starting off with the cheapest of the four, the Banquet Meatloaf Dinner, which weighs in at 11.88 ounces and costs $1.68, and consists of gravy over meatloaf made with chicken, pork, and beef, creamy mashed potatoes, cinnamon apple dessert, and sweet corn. Here's the list of ingredients, and there's a whole bunch of them. As I was reading through the ingredients, I was amazed to see that there's no TVP. But there is TSP, which is the same thing. And no, it's not your retirement account. But they do have one of my favorite ingredients, MSG, also known as monosodium glutamate, which makes everything taste better. The whole banquet meatloaf dinner has 330 calories, 11 grams of total fat, 3.5 grams of saturated fat, no trans fat, 50 milligrams of cholesterol, 1,350 milligrams of sodium, 43 grams of carbohydrates, 5 grams of fiber, 11 grams of sugars, and 13 grams of protein. That's a whole lot of sodium and such a small meal. It's more than half of your recommended daily allowance of sodium. Here's what our banquet meatloaf meal looks like right out of the box. According to the cooking instructions, we had to remove the apple dessert, and then we'll replace it later. Here's our banquet meatloaf dinner after microwaving according to the instructions on the box. And that looks absolutely nothing like the picture on the box. Actually, it doesn't look very appealing at all. Now, as you can see, banquet's not very generous with the corn, but with that said, the corn was super sweet. I don't know if it was the corn itself or they added sugar to it, but it was super sweet and tasty. Next we tried the potatoes. We tried to do it without any gravy on it, but the gravy was all over the place. And the potatoes were better than I expected. They looked like a runny mess, but they were thicker than they looked, but they were a little on the bland side, which I expected, but overall they weren't too bad. But they did have a weird aftertaste to them. Before cutting into and scooping up a big old piece of meatloaf, we tried the gravy by itself. And although the gravy wasn't bad, it was missing one thing. Flavor, which is pretty important to have. So it was definitely on the bland, underwhelming side, but that wasn't due to a lack of sodium. I'm pretty sure the gravy had 90% of the sodium in this dinner. Then it was time to try the meatloaf. Now that shot right there, Looks delicious. So into the old pie hole and down the gullet it went. And I hate to keep using the term spongy, but that's what it is. There's no beefy flavor at all. The only flavor you get is from the gravy, which didn't have a lot of flavor on its own. So now we try to bite of everything. The corn, the mashed potatoes and gravy, and the meatloaf. I know a lot of people don't like their food touching, but this is my kind of thing. I love mixing food together. 
And once we mixed the corn, the mashed potatoes, the gravy, and the meatloaf, it was still bland. So then of course we finally had to try the apple dessert, which is always good. Because it's basically sugar, cinnamon, and apples. It's basically a hot applesauce. Banquet's meatloaf meal wasn't great, it wasn't good, and at under $2, it was edible. At the end of the day, for $1.68, you get something warm to eat and you get some calories. I don't really want to rate this meal because it is the bottom of the barrel compared to the next three. So I'm going to rate it and I'm going to give it a 3 out of 10. If you're hungry and you only have a dollar and change in your pocket, it'll serve its purpose. Now for Boston Market's 14 ounce meatloaf meal that costs $3.32, which includes meatloaf with signature homestyle mashed potatoes and gravy. The picture of the meatloaf dinner looks really good on their site and there appears to be two pieces of meatloaf. Let's see how it compares to the actual meal after we heat it up. In the event you didn't know, Boston Market is all about the meat. Arby's has the meats. Boston Market is all about the meat. So are we going to be in a frozen food, fast food battle over the meats? Here's the list of ingredients. Boston Market can't really be all about the meat because they have TVP in their meatloaf. But it is what it is when you're dealing with frozen processed foods. The whole Boston meatloaf dinner has 430 calories, 23 grams of total fat, 10 grams of saturated fat, 1 gram of trans fat, 70 milligrams of cholesterol, 1,680 milligrams of sodium, 37 grams of carbohydrates, 2 grams of fiber, 3 grams of sugars, and 19 grams of protein. So far, the amount of sodium in these meals is unreal. Here's the Boston Market meatloaf dinner right out of the box, and it doesn't appear that there's two patties, like the picture on the box. And here's our Boston Market meatloaf dinner after microwaving according to the directions on the box. And I've got to say, that meatloaf looks pretty good, but I still only see one piece. So we gave the mashed potatoes a mix first. And to me, it's good that the mashed potatoes look dry and gloopy. And I know there's going to be a scooter out there saying, why don't you put butter and salt and pepper on them before you eat them? And that's a good question and a good idea. And there's nothing wrong if you want to do that. But I'm trying the meal as is for you, the people, so you know exactly how the meal tastes right out of the box without doctoring it up. Of course, you can always add salt and pepper later to suit your taste. But let me tell you, the potatoes as is are my kind of potatoes. They're a little thick. They're a little starchy and they're a little dry, just like they would be if you were in the middle of making them at home and they weren't quite done, which would be your prime opportunity to add butter and salt and pepper if you like. Or you can take advantage of the gravy that is served with. Now, before we taste the gravy, I almost forgot to mention that the flavor of the potatoes was delicious. Personally, I could eat the potatoes as is. They're kind of lumpy and homemade tasting. Some people like smooth mashed potatoes. Some people like lumpy mashed potatoes, like me. The gravy was really good. It was savory, rich, and beefy, though on its own, it was a little salty. I didn't see the second meatloaf patty at first, but it was under the top one. The other two brands of upcoming meatloaf that we're gonna try better be worried because this one was absolutely delicious. The meatloaf had a great flavor on its own. It didn't necessarily need the gravy, but the two complemented each other. The texture of the meatloaf was good. It was firm, but not spongy, even with the TVP added. Now it was time to get a scoop of these homemade tasting potatoes with the meatloaf and the gravy. And that final bite was almost as good as homemade. Well, not really almost as good as homemade, but you get the point. It was very good and definitely worthy of a nine out of 10. Now for Stouffer's 9 and 7 8 ounce classic meatloaf dinner. All they had to do is add another drop of gravy to make it 10 ounces. This classic meatloaf dinner costs $3.48, which consists of ketchup glazed meatloaf made with natural beef and pork and a homestyle gravy with russet mashed potatoes. Stouffer says it tastes like homemade. It's made with ingredients you can feel good about like natural beef and pork with no artificial ingredients 
and only minimally processed. Here's a list of ingredients, and there's no TVP, but there is TSF. I guess these ingredients are just a given in frozen processed meals. You can't get around them. Stouffer's whole meatloaf dinner has 350 calories, 17 grams of total fat, 7 grams of saturated fat, no trans fat, 55 milligrams of cholesterol, 900 milligrams of sodium, 26 grams of carbohydrates, 2 grams of fiber, 6 grams of sugars, and 22 grams of protein. Here's the Stouffer's meatloaf and mashed potatoes right out of the box. Now these Stouffer's mashed potatoes look very similar to the Boston Market mashed potatoes. And you can see they had a little bit of seasoning on them, or somebody dropped them on the floor and got some grass clippings. Grass clippings or not, these potatoes were slightly better than the Boston Market potatoes. They still have that thick lumpiness that I like, but they were richer and creamier and had a slightly better flavor. Next was a spoonful of the gravy, and the gravy looked delicious. But in this case, looks were deceiving. I mean, the gravy wasn't terrible, but it didn't have that rich beefiness that the Boston Market gravy had. This was much saltier, and it had a weird aftertaste, even after the second try. The texture and the flavor of the Stouffer's meatloaf is what really stood out. This meatloaf is how I like to make meatloaf, to where it barely holds together. It holds together just enough to be able to cut it. You can taste onions and peppers in this meatloaf exactly how I like it. And it gives it more of a homemade taste and texture, but the gravy still had that strange aftertaste. I couldn't picture what it was. Maybe it was the plastic? And then we took the final bite of everything, the meatloaf, the gravy, and the mashed potatoes. And that final bite brought everything together like a home cooked comforting meal. It was delicious. And I hate giving two meals that I'm comparing against each other the same score. But I'm going to give Stouffer's Meatloaf and Mashed Potato Meal a 9 out of 10 as well. The final meatloaf dinner we have is Marie Callender's Meatloaf and Gravy, which weighs in at 12.4 ounces and costs $3.48, and includes meatloaf and a homestyle gravy with creamy mashed potatoes and corn, and doesn't have any preservatives or artificial flavors. Here's a list of ingredients, and there's no TVP or TSP. There's nothing textured but the meat. The whole meatloaf dinner has 370 calories, 15 grams of total fat, 6 grams of saturated fat, no trans fat, 1.5 grams of polyunsaturated fat, 6 grams of monounsaturated fat, 55 milligrams of cholesterol, 1,260 milligrams of sodium, 45 grams of carbohydrates, 4 grams of fiber, 10 grams of sugars, and 21 grams of protein. Here's the Marie Callender's meatloaf meal right out of the box. And here it is again after cooking according to the directions on the box. So we got a spoonful of the corn to try first. And when I first bit into it, I thought the corn was pretty good. But then I started getting a weird taste to it, like it was old and dry. So I tried another spoonful thinking there's no way that the corn in the cheap banquet meal was going to be better than the corn in the Marie Callender's. And the corn in the cheap banquet meal was by far superior. The corn in the Marie Callender's meal sucked. Next we went in to try the mashed potatoes. And Marie Callender's has been in this game long enough to know to keep the mashed potatoes separate from the gravy or you're going to have a mess like you have here. And believe it or not, we were actually able to get a spoonful of the mashed potatoes without the gravy. And the potatoes tasted better than they looked. And the potatoes weren't actually too bad at all. I thought they would be real soupy like they are in the meal, but once we scooped them up, they seemed to thicken up. But the Marie Callender's mashed potatoes didn't even come close to the Stouffer's or the Boston Market mashed potatoes. Then we went in and got a little bit of the gravy. 
The gravy was pretty good. It had a really good beefy flavor to it, but it was extremely salty. Next, we cut off a piece of the meatloaf. And I thought it looked a little bit lackluster sitting in the tray. But once it was topped with the gravy on the spoon, it looked a little bit better. And then once it went into my pie hole, it tasted better than it looked. The flavor wasn't amazing, but the texture was nice and tender and the meatloaf was moist. And it was finally time for the obligatory bite of everything. The meatloaf and gravy, mashed potatoes, and corn. And it was a decent, comforting bite. Nothing spectacular, but pretty decent. I was a little disappointed with Marie Callender's meatloaf dinner. They normally have pretty good food, which is why I'm giving Marie Callender's meatloaf dinner a 7 out of 10. Have you ever thought about what you would do if you had four frozen meatloaf dinners left over? You'd mix them all together, of course, all the potatoes, and cut up all the meatloaf and gravy and mix it together. And pray that you come up with a good meatloaf dinner. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.